If you clicked on this video, I'm gonna assume you want a massive squat. So today what I'm gonna do is share with you the three most valuable tips that I got that helped me build a 900 pound plus squat for myself. Now I guarantee you these cues are gonna help you as well. So if you want a huge squat, be sure to watch this video. Let's get it. but it needs to start from the ground and then include the hip. There's no point having the hip external rotation if we don't have the anchor in the ground to tie us in to give us the tension. And welcome back to your mum's favorite channel on YouTube, Cult Strength. Hope you're doing well today. It is leg day here for me, so it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a good one. Now, in today's session, what I wanted to do was to share with you three really, really valuable tips when it comes to building a massive squat. Now, my best squat ever is 415 kilograms, that is well over 900 pounds, and that was done in competition. So I do know a thing or two about the squat, and what I wanna share with you today is some of the really key things that I you know, integrated into my training, into my squat to help me achieve that. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, I took a bit of a break away from squatting and last week I did my first session back. So this is week two back to squat, so I'm not gonna be going crazy heavy today. We'll still work up to something reasonable though, don't get me wrong, because I do wanna demonstrate these things for you under a decent load, under something that's relatively heavy. Again, it won't be anything crazy, but I think that you know when I'm trying to, to show you something, you need to see it in action, and it's only fair that I do it um, you know, in, a, in a relative way that, that makes sense for you because there's too many, let's say, influencers that uh, like to do tutorials, I think, on social media with empty barbells and 60 kilos, but anyone can do you know, perfect repetitions at 60 kilos. It's more about how can we utilize these technique changes to help us squat our absolute max the same way that we squat 60 kilos, okay? It shouldn't, you know, just degrade as it gets heavier. Yes, it becomes a little more challenging to keep doing these things. Hence, we have to get stronger, right? We have to really work on applying these things to our squat for it to truly work. But that's not really that hard. As long as you come into your sessions and you focus on these cues, because they're not very complicated, they're quite simple. Your squat will improve drastically. That is a guarantee. So I'm gonna get started soon. We'll start working up plate by plate and uh, I'll get my lovely assistant in again today uh, to run the mono for me from about four plates onwards as we work towards something heavy. And as we work towards the heavier weights, I'll start going over these three cues. And then when I finish the top set, what I'm gonna do then is show you my favorite exercise that you can do to really help you refine and nail these new cues that you're gonna to add to your squat. It's my favorite squat variation, and I'm gonna talk you through that and how I'm executing it to make sure that it really does benefit my, my squat, you know, or your max squat, whatever it is you're trying to do. If you're trying to get a huge squat, you need to make sure you're executing accessory movements in a certain way, right, to help fuel that. We don't do it aimlessly. But I'll get some pre-workout in now, and then we're gonna to get to work. We'll start warming up. It's gonna be a great session. Dry scoop as always because you know the rules, a dry scoop a day keeps the sumo boys away from your butt. You know, which is probably a good thing for most of you. You probably pull conventional. If you pull sumo, no hate. It just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? You do you, baby. But I'm gonna dry scoop and pull conventional. Hmm. Alrighty then, it's time to party. Let's do this. All right, baby, 65 kilos to start with. Now, this is a 25 kilogram bar, and we'll make plate jumps, 20 kilo plates each side, each set, right? When I get the three plates aside, I'll start going over these tips. We'll go, I'll give you one tip at uh, 140 kilos, one at 180, and then one at 220, and we'll put it all together for that last set. And then after that, we're gonna go through the best accessory movement to really learn to integrate these cues into your squat. That's what's gonna be key. 
We'll start now, 65 kilos. I'll do, say, six repetitions, and then we'll add another plate, and we'll do another set. Let's go. Yeah, buddy, let's go. All right, baby, 105 kilos, let's get it. Yeah, boy. Three plates next. Let's go. All right, baby. Three plates on the bar now, 145 kilos. And we're going to go over our first really valuable cue that you can use with your squatting, okay? Now, the first thing that we're talking about here is our grounding, okay? Now, what is the grounding? So what are we doing with our feet? Because this is so often overlooked, okay, as one of those little things. But in reality, this is one of those big things that really dictate the potential of your squat, okay? If you cannot use your feet correctly, you will not be using your body correctly. You will not be creating enough tension to be effective. So we really, really need to focus on what exactly we're trying to do to the ground via our feet. Now, what we want to do is think about corkscrewing, okay, your feet, and think of your, your toes as like claws, right? Your big toe especially, but all of them, okay? But really think about the big toe, because that's your anchor point, okay? Your big toe and your heel are like your anchors. Now what you want to do is dig your big toe into the ground, make sure you feel your heel pressing into the ground, curl your toes into the ground as hard as you can, right? And then spread the floor outwards, okay? external rotation from the floor. You're gonna create tension, you're gonna build a lot of tension, and to follow from the feet, you will then be able to do things like flex your quads and squeeze your glutes to create that complete chain of tension from the floor to the hips. Okay, and we'll talk about how to connect that chain all the way to the top a little bit later, but really focus on what you're doing with your feet. Now, I love to squat barefooted. Not everyone can train barefooted because you might train in a commercial gym. I have my own space. I have disgusting feet, and it doesn't really matter if it offends anyone because there's no one here. It's all good. But you know, using bare feet really allows us to fill the ground with our feet to get a sense of what we're doing. When we're using shoes that are too thick and too spongy, then it's really hard to feel the floor. So if you're gonna use a shoe when you squat, use something that has a very, very hard, thin sole ideally, okay? You can use lifting shoes with a raised heel because they're typically still quite hard. They've got like a really hard bottom. You just don't want anything spongy like a running shoe or a, or a casual shoe, okay? We want something nice and hard so you can really feel what you're doing with your feet to make sure you're externally rotating. I'm gonna show you kind of what that looks like in practice, although it's not super obvious with the squat, right? Because it's such a small thing, the feet but it's more about the intention. You will see that I'm externally rotating from the floor, my ankles are externally rotated, and then my knees externally rotate, and, and lastly, my hips will follow suit by externally rotating, okay? External rotation is the process of driving your knees out or opening your hips, um, for anyone wondering. So I'm gonna execute a set now. I'll go three repetitions, and then we'll add another plate, and I'll bring my assistant in when we get to four plates, and we'll go over the next cue to help you build a massive squat. I hope you're enjoying this. Like this video, drop a comment and subscribe. You're the best. Let's go. 
All right, now there's also like a little nuance when it comes to grounding and things like that, depending on if you walk out or if you use the mono. But for this set, I'll walk it out just so you can see how I set my feet. Again, it's a very minimal thing to look at, but when you do it and feel it, it makes a huge difference. And then for the next sets after that, I'll set my feet into the ground before I unrack the weight. That's how you want to do it if you're running with the mono, okay? You want to be as efficient as possible. Let's go. Spread the floor. Big toes in the ground. Easy peasy, four plates next. Let's go. So that's the cue of, you know, grounding, spreading the floor, really using your feet. It's really important to use your feet, but uh, we're gonna go over all of this again on that top set. We're gonna put the three cues together and execute them all at the same time, focusing on each one of those, okay? But that's the grounding. The next set, we're gonna focus on something a little bit different. I'll load four plates on and then we'll have a chat, but I hope that helps. If you, you know, can really learn to apply that, you will feel so much stronger and so much more in control of the barbell, especially on the way down, right? Now, if you've ever done a heavy squat and you feel like you don't have control on the way down, it never really ends well. So we wanna maintain control and tension from the floor up to the barbell, all the way through your body from the get-go. That's how we have a successful squat. And starting with the grounding, that's a fantastic way to put yourself in the right direction. Let's go. All right, baby, four plates loaded on the bar. Now, the second cue that's gonna be extremely valuable to you is bracing, learning how to brace correctly. Now, most people that I see don't quite have the gist of what a brace is. They understand, I guess, the idea of it, but executing it is a different thing altogether. Now, something that we need to realize with the brace is that this will honestly dictate how much load you can handle. If you cannot brace, you will not be able to hold a maximal load. What's gonna happen is when you go down into the squat, you're gonna to start to really start to fold over through the upper back and lose all that positioning. And typically the bar will roll over your head. That's typically how we fail when we lose our brace. So if you wanna avoid having the barbell go over your head, you wanna avoid missing squats due to not knowing how to brace properly, you need to think about it in two parts, right? We have our upper back and we have our midsection. And this is in terms of the upper body bracing, okay? We have to think about both of those things. Now, the barbell sits on our upper back, right? That's the shelf. We need to create the shelf. Now, how do we create the shelf? With our brace. So we talk about scapular protraction and, and you know, retraction, depression, protraction, things like that. Fancy words for squeezing your shoulder blades in or pushing them out. When we squat, we really want to think about squeezing them in as hard as we can. This is very similar to how we bench press. We wanna squeeze them together as hard as we can and then shove them down, okay? You wanna retract and depress the shoulder blades. Now what we're gonna do then, because the bar's on our back, we're squeezing our elbows together as if you're trying to touch them behind your back. So you're reaching back with your elbows, squeezing your shoulder blades together, pulling down with your shoulder blades, pulling down on the barbell into your rear delts, and that's how we create that shelf, okay? We create that shelf by bunching everything up and squeezing it back and pulling it down as hard as we can. And you'll find that shelf right on the rear delt where the barbell will sit. That will give it some stability. So the bracing is about creating stability in two manners, right? Within ourselves, so stability inside, but also giving the barbell a stable place to sit. It's like we don't want the barbell off center, right? We don't want it misplaced. We want it in the middle and we want it stable. We don't want it rolling around. The moment we start having the barbell rolling around or shifting on our back, again, the moment we miss lifts is the moment we get hurt. So really focus on that brace, squeezing your shoulders back together as hard as you can, squeezing the barbell down into your back, okay? Boom, brace. Now the second part of that to tie that together is the abs, the midsection. 
When we brace, we don't just want to aimlessly push our stomach out and we don't want to pull in, okay? A lot of people think bracing is squeezing in, pulling their stomach in. It's not that, it is pushing it out, but there's also an action with the rib cage we have to think about. You want to push the rib cage down as we expand our midsection. And we want to expand through the front and the sides, okay? We want to think about blowing out like a balloon and pushing our rib cage down at the same time. Now, when you tie that in with what we're doing with our back, we're getting that squeeze down. So when we pull the barbell down at the same time, we're pulling our rib cage down. So to execute it, it would look like we're here with the barbell on our back, we get a breath, and then we squeeze down, boom, brace. We squeeze down, we expand our midsection, pulling our rib cage down to our pelvis, squeezing the barbell into our upper back, okay? And then we'll tie that in with the first cue and the third cue at the end. All right, but this is the second one to focus on. So for this video, watch how I really brace. I'm gonna do two repetitions to give you a chance to see. It's a big breath in through my belly, okay? Into my diaphragm. Try not to breathe into your clavicle or your upper chest. We don't just wanna go like this, right? We wanna fill this up with air. Right, the brace, pushing into the belt, squeezing down. I'm gonna hit this now for two repetitions and then we'll move on. Let's go. All right, gang, 185 kilos, two repetitions, just warming up. This set, we're focusing on that bracing, okay? The upper body bracing. So pay attention to what I'm doing there. I'm really trying, you know, to avoid letting my, my chest get too high when I breathe in. Trying to keep everything pulled in, locked in, nice and tight, nice and secure. Let's get this. Two reps. Thank you. Woo! All right, so that is our second cue when it comes to bracing. Now, again, it may not always be super obvious, right? But one thing you really wanna focus on when you're doing this, right? From the side here, okay? When we're squatting, we don't wanna stick our chest out, okay? If you're sticking your chest up in the air, you're pushing your rib cage out, you're bracing wrong, okay? Now, we still want to maintain a big chest and a strong chest, but we don't want to do it by pushing our rib cage out. Okay, we're gonna to fail to brace if we do that. The best way to keep a big chest right is to just simply pull your shoulder blades back together as hard as you can, squeeze your chest up, but pull your rib cage down, right? It's like this, pulling down here, not out here. So it's down versus out, right? Maybe a small difference to look at, but again, it makes a massive difference when we put that all together. Now, for the next set, I'm gonna hit, we've got uh, five plates on the bar, so 225 kilos, and we're gonna go over the third cue, and then we're gonna put it all together for that top set after this. This will be my last warm up, and we'll hit a nice little single, and uh, yeah, so far so good. Again, if it's my second squat session back in a while, it's a little bit rusty, but you know, just going through the motions of what I need to do, feeling it out, and uh, it's not feeling too bad. So hopefully this next set goes okay, and then we can go maybe another plate heavier for the top set. But yeah, let's do this. Okay, now the third and final cue for this video that's gonna help you have a massive squat. This cue is all about tension, okay? But more specifically, knees out kind of tension. Now you probably hear the cue, knees out, drive your knees out quite a lot. And in all honesty, it's probably very overused um, without context. There needs to be context to what that means. And that is where the third one really does tie into the first one as well. It's very important these things tie in together. Otherwise we're gonna have a very disjointed squat, okay? So when it comes to tension and driving our knees out, we have to understand where the intention comes from or how do we get there. It's very easy to simply just stand there and do a squat and just flop your knees out as hard as you can, right? 
But when we do that, typically we start losing tension. We start losing our grounding. We need to maintain the grounding the entire time. That's where it all starts. A lot of people think that driving the knees out comes from the knees or it comes from the hips directly. I'd say yes, the hips are definitely involved, but it needs to start from the ground and then include the hip. There's no point having the hip external rotation if we don't have the anchor in the ground to tie us in to give us the tension. It then becomes pointless. Okay, so we really need to focus on keeping our fucking foot and our big toe in the ground, driving that out externally, rotating from the floor, right? Because we're already creating that external force, that external rotation. And then what we do is we're going to flex our quads, we're going to squeeze our glutes, and then we're going to do our squat. We're going to drive our knees out to the side slightly whilst maintaining that tension from the floor. Now, how far out should we be driving our knees? Well, you shouldn't be just driving them out aimlessly. As I said, I think what I like to do is I like to aim to push my knees out over my pinky toe. Okay, so there is some external rotation. It's going out over my toes, but not out aimlessly. I'm still maintaining tension. I think any further than that, what happens is your big toe starts to come off the ground and you start losing that grounding and that tension from the floor. So knees over toes when you squat is not a bad thing. Okay, knees over toes is probably ideal for most people. We just need to make sure we're loading everything the right way, like our hips and things like that, and we're not just shoving all the pressure down on our knees, right? If you can maintain that tension from the floor, you get that external rotation from the hip, you get everything switched on, you drive your knees over your toes and externally rotate, you're gonna have an extremely strong and stable squat, and you're gonna have a hard time getting injured. You're gonna have to try real hard to get hurt if you squat like that. Okay, that is key to a big squat and to staying healthy in the gym under a heavy squat bar. So, you know, I think it's time to get this, this next one in now, this last warm up. We'll hit this, we'll focus on the knees out, okay? And then the next set after that, we'll tie it all in again. We'll put it all together, hit that top single, and then we'll hit that back down work, the accessory movement, the variation movement that is really gonna help you fine tune this thing. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, baby. All right, baby, so five plates. Now I paused it in the hole just a little bit to emphasize that position to you with the knees out, right? A nice proud chest, knees out, nice strong position to come out of the hole and it was nice and smooth. Now I'm gonna chuck another plate on the bar now. This is my top set. This is where we're gonna tie it all together. So I am, you know, putting another plate on the bar to challenge myself. This will be challenging for me. I haven't done any back squats apart from last week in the last, you know, four or five months. And it's definitely one of those things that you get rusty at with no practice. So it's gonna be challenging for me to maintain that technique, but I guess that's kind of the point of this, right? I wanna show you how to execute that under heavy load, under pressure, right? I need to make it look nice. I'm gonna do one repetition. I've got one chance to make it look good. And that's what it's about. You know, I don't wanna fuck it up. I'm confident I can do this with relative ease, but I still really need to focus and switch on to make sure that I'm getting that grounding. My big toes in the ground, got that external rotation. My upper back is nice and strong, squeezing that bar down into my back, bracing, expanding from the midsection outwards whilst pulling my rib cage down towards my pelvis. And then I'm getting that knees out, tension, external rotation, okay, from the glutes, from the ground, all that external rotation, all that tension, and I'm maintaining that on the way down and then popping out of the hole. Now the hard part is to maintain tension on the way down, especially as it gets heavier. It becomes much harder to keep external rotation. We start getting forced to internal rotation, okay? But that's the challenge. We need to be strong enough to maintain the external rotation. We must be strong enough to maintain that perfect position to stand up out of the hole. And that's the ball game. We have to get strong enough to be able to perform the movement the best way we possibly can to shift the most amount of weight. When it comes down to it, that's what it is. So I'll take a few minutes now. I'll get my head in the game. We've got 265 kilos going on the bar in a moment. 
and then we're going to hit this. We're going to hit it, and then we're going to go through the variation movements that are really going to help you refine the movement. But again, if, you enjoyed, if you've enjoyed this video, if you got something out of it, please like this video, please drop a comment, and subscribe or share it with your friends and be sure to hit the notification button to be notified when I upload, which is four to five days per week. Let's do this. Let's get it. Hoof. One rep. All right, gang, 265 kilos, moved like a treat. And yeah, it was a slightly challenging weight, don't get me wrong, but you know, technique stayed relatively good, uh, especially considering it's only week two of my new program. So I'm really happy with that. Now though, we're gonna move on and we're gonna hit the accessory movement, the variation movement that I love so much that really helps me build uh, or refine my squat. This was a key movement for me when I, when I built a 415 kilogram squat. That is the paused squat. Now, the emphasis we have to have with the pause squat is the important thing here. Most of you have probably heard of a pause squat or done one yourself. Not every pause squat is the same, okay? Not every squat is the same. Our intention dictates what we're gonna get out of this, okay? We need, to, we need to think about, firstly, what are the three cues we're trying to work on? Okay, and where can we analyze this movement the best? And I'd say that the pause at the bottom is giving us an excellent moment to analyze if we're in the correct position and if we've done the right thing. It's a snapshot. That's exactly what it is. The pause at the bottom is a snapshot of your squat. If you're looking shitty and out of position in that snapshot, you're gonna have a very hard time standing up. If you can get that perfect position, that picture perfect position in the hole, you're setting yourself up for success, okay? so. The pause squat will allow you to really slow things down and think about things a little bit more. Okay, now we're typically working a little bit lighter than we are with our main squats, which is the purpose of this, right? I'm gonna go lighter here. I'm gonna go back to 185 kilos, take off two plates each side and do two sets of five repetitions. Okay, I'm gonna be focusing on solely the movement quality. The weight is still challenging. It's around a seven RPE. It needs to be somewhat challenging because we need to be challenged, you know, through that range under load so we can work on maintaining that position under load. There's no point doing it without a load because there's a different ball game when you have a load. It's pretty simple. So we're gonna slow it down. We're gonna think about it on the way down and before we start, right, we're gonna be making sure that in the hole, there's a checklist in our head. We're only in the hole for one to two seconds, but it's very quick. Am I grounded? Is my brace still there and my knees out? If your answer is yes to all those things, you're in a very good place, okay? Now it's very easy to fix these mistakes when we slow it down, when we go a little bit lighter, and when we pause it, because it becomes more apparent. As I said, it's a snapshot at the bottom. When we bounce in and out of a squat sometimes, it can be hard to pick these things up. When we slow it down and when we stop, you cannot hide from it. So I'm gonna do two sets of five now, and as you're watching, just focus on the three things I said, okay? My feet are gonna be externally rotated as hard as I can. I'm gonna be bracing, squeezing down and expanding out as hard as I can from my midsection, squeezing my upper back hard and driving my knees out, but maintaining tension, maintaining my grounding through the floor as I'm paused in the hole. I am not switching off. We are not sitting down in the hole as far as we can and just sitting on our calves and switching off. We're maintaining tension at a difficult point, right on parallel, making sure we're in the perfect position to stand up. Okay, think about why we're doing this. There's ways we can get around making poor squats easier. We're not trying to make it easier. We're trying to make it hard. We're trying to make it perfect so that it helps our main squat. You understand? This is an accessory movement. Treat your accessories with the respect they deserve if you want to get stronger. Very simple. With these, remember that snapshot at the bottom of each repetition in the hole. We have five repetitions, which means five snapshots. I am maintaining tension, maintaining position with each and every single repetition, 
holding my brace. It's really important that you get that big breath and big brace at the top of each repetition, but you must hold your breath until you get back to the top. You do not want to let your breath out at the bottom. You do not want to lose your brace. You will get buckled, okay? Five repetitions now, two sets. Really think about that snapshot, that, that position at the bottom. That's what your squat wants to look like, okay? Knees out, strong chest, strong hips. Let's go. Yeah, buddy. Thank you. Let's go. Thank you very much and that wraps it up for the week two squats now still going to do some leg press and some leg extensions and a bit of cardio uh, but that's all the squatting i'm going to do today i'm not doing a lot of volume as my deadlift is my priority at the moment so i need to make sure that i'm doing just enough squatting to supplement my deadlift but not to be a detriment to it right there's a fine line there with the fatigue that can kick in because deadlifts are heavy at the moment so these need to be moderate at best and today was good a nice little challenge though don't get me wrong it was nice to load six plates on to make it very very easy and to look quite nice and uh i really wanted to share some value with you today to help you guys build a bigger squat right because having a big squat is quite often overlooked not a lot of people train legs but i think to be a complete lifter and i think just in general for health have strong legs and a strong upper body be balanced Okay, don't just be someone who goes and lays on a bench and does bench press. Build some big legs, man. If you want a big deadlift, having a big squat will help. It builds your posterior chain like a motherfucker. Strong hips, it really, really helps. So don't neglect it, even if you don't like it. Like, I'll be honest with you, my least favorite of the three lifts, but it's my biggest of the three. 415 kilo squat. That's my best squat ever. So, it's not too bad. Pretty happy with it. I've coached a lot of great lifters to some huge squats as well. And I just wanted to help you guys out. So if you can do me a favor, if you really did find some value here, let me know what you learned in the comments. And again, as always, please make sure you're subscribed. Every person who subscribed, who likes this video, who engages, really helps me with my goals of growing this channel uh, as big as I possibly can. And I couldn't do it without you guys. But there's a lot of exciting stuff coming up this week. This Saturday, Vassa, big Vassa, is visiting the Colt Strength Compound. We're doing some eating and some bench pressing, and we're gonna film it. We're gonna film it. Do you wanna see us eat pre-workout and post-workout, and then do some bench press? Because I think that sounds pretty good. But again, let me know in the comments. But yeah, it's your turn now. Go to the fucking gym, baby. Let's go.